This year marked a decade of decline in freedom across Africa. This is set in the context of 18 consecutive years of global decline. This year, 14 African countries and territories saw a decline, leaving 93% of the population living in partly free or not free contexts. Important elections were held in Nigeria, Zimbabwe, and Madagascar. Unfortunately, these were marred by electoral disputes, political violence, and repression. There were also coups in Niger and Gabon. These developments underscore the impact that flawed elections, armed conflict, and political repression have on freedom across Africa. Niger suffered an 18-point decline in this year's Freedom in the World report. President Bazoum was overthrown on July 26 by General Abdurrahman Tiani, the commander of the Presidential Guard. This was the eighth successful military of the true in Africa since 2020. Despite claims made by coup leaders in the Sahel region and beyond, it is often challenging to bring about stability, better economic conditions and respect for human rights after coups. The lack of political self-determination often leads to an exacerbation of human rights, violations and abuse. In Sudan, for example, where a coup occurred in October 2021, military leaders claimed that infighting amongst the civilians in the transition government impaired the stability of the country. Nowadays, Sudan is home to the largest number of internally displaced people in the world. 2023 has been marked as one of the darkest years uh, in the long history of the modern Sudan. And this time, the Sudan conflict is not a civil war in the bush. It is a war in the city against not only the civilian innocent, but against the whole state system. What is really hopeful and within all of this conflict is how the civil society organizations uh, and groups, activists, peace builders, and journalists work within this conflict, navigating a very complex systems and being able to ask key critical questions that really, really represent the biggest hope for the country's return to democracy. In South Africa, we're going towards, you know, 30 years of democratic um, disposition within the country. 2024 is being described as the new 1994 for South Africa, but what does that actually mean? Everyone is looking at this election and wanting to see if democracy will actually stand amidst all the allegations of corruption, amidst all the allegations of state capture. But there's a lot more than just casting your vote at the ballot. It goes beyond that. It's following your vote and making sure that your vote works for you. Even if it is not the candidate that you voted for that ends up in office, how are you going to work for me? Because at the end of the day, that's it. You work for me.